Hello, I'm Carl Moore. Uh, I'm an artist living in Memphis, Tennessee. I paint and um, I'm here to talk to you about my most recent body of work called Pause. Pause is a, body, uh, it's a series of paintings that I've worked on probably over the last two years and it encompasses images of people or people in the black community working and living in what I call a pause position. And this position is the idea of living and working day to day, but with the series of events that have taken place in, I'm gonna say 2020, 2021, they have made a drastic effect on the black community. And so the show represents the idea of being paused, waiting on the next event, waiting on the next situation, and the series of events that take place seemingly on a daily basis. This body of work is, you know, particularly paused. Um, it was developed over a two year period, but it doesn't stray far from my working process and my body of work dealing with social injustice, social, what I call social living, and just the idea of human, being a human being and the right to live as a human being. So the inspiration for pause started out uh, as a body of small uh, 12 by 12 inch paintings. The series started at four, then it started at six. I always like to work in odd numbers, even numbers for some reason. And I stopped it at 20, which is kind of relevant to a, a previous body of work I did a few years ago of 20 paintings. And I wanted to identify every aspect of what it is to live black. I mean, good, bad, uh, indifferent, but just the, the social connection of a community. And that's what most of my work is. It, it deals with a community of people living different aspects of life. So pause did come close to being relevant to what's going on today uh, in the news. Uh, just the idea of living and the changes that are taking place in communities, the changes that take place on a daily basis. So, the, I, you know, when I think about pause, I'm thinking about uh, that person waking up in the morning and you're looking at the news and you're waiting for the next story. You're waiting for the next, um, not necessarily good story, uh, or you're waiting on the next event. But I think in general, people live this kind of life. You live paused, you're waiting. You're always waiting for something. So for this show and this body of work, just the idea of, I took a look at all my characters and I, you can see they're all paused, waiting or they're involved in a situation and you're waiting for the outcome. So it's more or less, um, it's an it's a indifferent interaction between the viewer and the artwork itself. The body of work started small, but while I was working on that body of work, I'm always working on more than one body of work at a time. Mm -hmm. And so, while I'm working on that body, I am, because I have so much in my sketchbook, I tend to work on larger pieces, smaller pieces. I never like to feel that I'm tied to one piece at that particular time. So these small paintings took place um, over the last two years, but I've completed quite a few other larger pieces in between. Um, the, and there is a difference in these small uh, paintings. These paintings were done with a matte uh, acrylic gouache. Um, initially, it was kind of an, an experiment with this paint. And then there was just something about the flatness of it that just kind of drew me in that it, it, it would lend itself to something more serious. So while I was experimenting and working on that body of work, which is called the American Gothic series. I was still working on larger pieces and pieces that were also in my sketchbook that I wanted to deal with. There's something interesting about the small pieces. When I initially started doing small pieces, I'm gonna say almost 15 years ago, 
they were supposed to be a relief from the larger pieces but this is like the third body of work of small works that I've created over a period of time and what has happened is the smaller pieces have become more uh, involved than the larger pieces uh, the larger pieces are what they are they are I consider them, I treat all my work the same, small or large, but the larger ones probably deal with a more complex, larger uh, context or narrative. And the smaller ones were supposed, to, were supposed to be simple, but as time went on, the smaller ones became very complex. They became more involved because you're dealing with a smaller space that you're trying to get a lot of context into. So. The smaller pieces, although in, there may be a level of simplicity in it, they ended up being more complex. They took more time. And the larger pieces actually became a relief from the smaller pieces. My work in itself, um, when I'm making, when I'm sitting down doing sketches, when I'm developing I actually have working titles. Um, I try to build a, a narrative, a build a body of work before I actually start sketching or painting on it. So um, my titles are already in place um, even before I even think about the painting because how I look at it from a research standpoint, I'm trying to develop, uh, I tr I'm trying to develop a thought. I'm trying to develop a statement. So when I'm doing my research, it starts from the point I would like to create this particular painting that's going to say this. And most of the work goes into trying to trying to develop the sketch or develop something that would lend itself to the conversation. So um, it's funny when I was in grad school, I had a professor who kind of took an issue with me having a list of titles. And I was like, to me that makes sense because these are my objective bodies of work. This is the research I want to work on. This is the theme I want to work on. So I develop um, actually the narrative before I actually even create the, the actual body of work or the actual painting. So I, um, it's funny, I do have a uh, notebook with about 500 titles divided up by theme and section and over time some of them become obsolete but a lot of the principle is still there. I think giving, giving the characters identity is important um, and a lot of my titles are they're not leading but they're more informational and directive. Um, I don't I don't believe in very um, vague titles. I think the viewer can see what's, I think the title will help them sometimes, but I think the viewer can see what the artwork is. But the title is supposed to help with, as far as I'm concerned, with identification. So trying to give this very vague title, you know, I think as an artist you should be there for the viewer. And you know, you're presenting your work to the viewer. And so the viewer is going to have their own idea or their own uh, last thought or uh, expectation of what the meaning is. But my job as the art artist is to present the work. And this is my title. This is what I'm saying. But it's, at the end of the day, it's still up to the viewer how they want to perceive it, how they want to accept the work. Because 98% of the time, you're not going to be standing next to that work to explain it to everybody. The content in the work, um, you know, so far as the, the mix of uh, very, uh, very calm, very pleasing imagery, and the very strong and very statement-based, I, I think subconsciously when I'm working in my studio, I am trying to create a balance. I don't believe in shock value artwork, at least for me. And I don't, for me, I don't think trying to shock my, shock the viewers into submission with one particular statement, I don't think that's, that's responsible for me creating 
this body of work and, and this presentation. But I am trying to strike a balance as an artist and talking about the community, talking about humanity. I am trying, trying to strike a balance and say, you know, there are beautiful things in the world. There is, um, there is medium events and then there are these eventful things that happen every day in the news. So it goes back to me trying to develop community or create a realistic view of the world we live in. Color in my work is um, it's really important. Uh, let's talk about the lines first. I always get that question, where do the outlines come from? Well, outlines started years ago when I would love the drawing uh, on the canvas. And I always had this issue with losing the line quality when you paint something. And so as an experiment, I started just incorporating a thin outline. And I love the effect. It, it was the desired effect. And then I started using color and line to emphasize the meaning or the emotion in the work itself. So over time, that has grown. And I hate the word style because um, I've started at some point not putting lines in different portions of the painting because I like how colors interact with each other. And when you're working with this idea of line in a piece of art, you start to have to, you have to balance the outline with the, with the background, with the color of the main character, with the color of the secondary character. So it becomes a basically um, 101 in how to mix colors and and how to balance the the values and the tints and the emotions of a color. And so for my work, color really is the, the basis because the basis, I mean, the color sets the tone. It sets the emotion. Color sets the, the, um, the, the strength of the artwork. And using color is important. Uh, and when you look at my, my work, there is a balance. Uh, I have to balance lights, I have to balance darks, I have to balance tones and values. Um, there's a lot of black. Um, and the idea of using black in my work came from the, I, Frank, came from the concept of, well, it came from two different levels. One was the stereotype idea of what black represents. And, and I, I wanted to create artwork with characters who portrayed their culture of black. And I know some would question the idea of using black, black, but why not? And with that, the goal was to make the subject matter or make the theme or content so relevant that the viewer did not pay attention to the color black. They more or less paid more attention to what the painting was saying. And then secondly, I use black because of, of the balance of strength within the color itself. And it's all, it all works together because I'm trying to relay an overall message. And using black, to be honest with you, when you're placing it with other colors, um, you, you, you have to play with this level of strength and you have to play, and black will enhance any other color. So um, I love mixing paint and there is something almost just relaxing when I mix that perfect color for me and being able to put it on canvas and then you're bumping it against other colors and they all have to work in harmony. So. I mean, I can't think of any other way to explain just how important color is in my body of work. And it's, it, and it's constantly changing. Um, I'm always striving, am, do, am I working too dark? Am I working too light? And I always end up somewhere with a medium value. 
but still that color has to lend itself to the theme of the artwork. One of the pieces, and don't get me wrong, as an artist, I like all my work, but most artists do. Uh, something as simple as the phone call. I was really impressed with what, you know, when I finished, and I think artists do either love or get to love or hate thing when they're finished, finished with a painting. Uh, to me, that was the simplest painting. Um, because everything that we do in life is based on a phone call. A phone call can change our life, uh, be it happy or be it sad. But that particular painting, I think the color was important. I, I wanted it to have a somber feel. And I've only did a few paintings where I've actually put a timeless element uh, or a more relevant element to that time, and that's the cell phone. I don't know where we're gonna be using 20 years from now, uh, but I'm usually very careful about that. But I think versus putting a traditional phone that I would almost say uh, half of our population don't know what that old traditional phone looks like. I think it was important because I think the idea of, that, of the phone call needed to have a phone. And so that's one of those artistic things. Do I put an old traditional uh, hand, uh, handset phone in this painting to drive home the idea? Or do I put something more modern and relative in it? So I went with kind of a really simple phone. But what's more important with the phone, if you're thinking about the thought process, is the color. In that particular painting, the green, the uh, somber blue, which is kind of reflects a late night call, um, and how the figure is paused. So to give you an idea of the working process of a piece of work and 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 what it takes to develop it. So it's just the positioning, the sketch, the color, the content, and that's where me working from an already preconceived title works for me because I know the dialogue that I want to develop. So the phone call was really something I really loved because, uh, and love, let me say it in the present, because I still, you know, the painting is still there. Um, it lends itself more to what it's supposed to be. And I think there's no vagueness in it, the phone call. You can't get any, any simpler than that. And working with these simple titles, such as Water, of uh, the man in the pool of water, and with that particular painting, what's more important to me is almost the environment that, that he's, that's around him. And sometimes the character is important, but the character wouldn't exist unless you develop the environment around that particular character. So uh, Water, I think, it kind of to me it's a more calming piece but it's one of those pieces it's up to the viewer on how to how to how to conceive it uh, what's going on to conceive the idea to conceive the narrative um, and I would say one piece that is very direct is recovery um, that particular painting um, it again is exactly what it's supposed to be, a person in a bed recovering. But the environment is really more important almost than the character itself. The, the content around the character is what builds the painting. So um, if you're talking about the structure of artwork, it involves a color, it involves a shape, it involves a foreground, middle ground, and background. Uh, but it also just involves how it's presented. Headline, um, I designed it a, about a year ago and it's based on some research I did uh, from the 1950s uh, banner hung out of, of the NAACP office and I thought that was so impactful for that time. and. Um, I look at that as a headline and we get bombarded with so many headlines now of police shooting, 
of black on black crime shootings and just shootings in general and we've we're the headlines now have left the idea of being in a newspaper which we still have but when you log into something i get them on my phone i get this headline that gets my attention so the uh, neon piece headline when i started thinking about it i started uh thinking about the size, what size should it be? And the fact that it's neon, it's gonna stand out anyway. And there is a such thing as being too big. And there's a such thing as being too small. Uh, but you can make any, either one work in this presentation. So when I started thinking about this, it was just something to add to this show, pause, that was important because what more representation do you need in something that'll make you pause is when you see a headline or a shocking headline of some kind. Uh, it's not my first time working with a text-based uh, piece of art. Um, I did one a few years ago, uh, a series of 14 panels based on the I'm a Man sign from the 1968 um, sanitation workers protest. So, and I've always a little bit worked with text here and there in, a, in my art, but this is my first uh, piece that's totally dedicated within itself, within itself to be a piece of art. And it's been designed, redesigned, reworked, uh, like I said, over the last two years, and it probably won't be the last. So, uh, but I think um, that is important in how that piece, that installation will stand alone uh, for what I needed to, needed to do. Way back, I, you know, with Rodney King, I did sketches the next day after Rodney King. And you know, we don't have, well back then we didn't have the availability of phone, cell phone video and all of that. We just relied on uh, if somebody just happened to have a video camera available, if not media or just a public person. So with Rodney King, I started sketching right after. But I treated Rodney King like I treat work now. I don't want to glorify it or take advantage of it by running and making artwork like right then. And I, and I don't have a problem with any artist to do that, uh, especially with now George Floyd and uh, a lot of other high profile people, things have happened to and shootings have taken place, you know, uh, Breonna Taylor. Uh, for me, it's a certain amount of respect to them, but I research and I do sketches. And so with, let's say with uh, Rodney King, I did not do the painting of Rodney King until like six or seven years ago. Uh, and to be honest with you, right when I started doing it, Rodney King drowned in his own swimming pool. And so with, with uh, in the show, uh, Pause, there is a uh, painting of Eric Garner. And I waited before I did that because again, um, you know, it's kind of one of those things, do you want to sensationalize it because the event is so horrible and you want to bring it light, bring the light to people to know who Eric Garner was, which I think now versus when Rodney King, there is media everywhere. There is footage, there's cell phone footage, and you can almost go see it anywhere. So I think I wanted it to have its time and for me to do the right kind of research and to sketch it because I want to make sure it's right. So when I finally did do Eric Garner, it's in one of the smaller pieces. And originally it was going to be the 12 by 12 and it was going to be a larger painting. but after I finished and talking to a few friends of mine, it was like that small painting said it, you know, it had the impact I wanted it to have. It made the statement. 
So doing direct imagery based on current events, um, I have either sketched it or I'm planning to sketch it. Um, I like to take time and do a little research. I want to get the image right. And you know, like for Eric Garner, that particular piece, I wanted to get the image right. I wanted it to lend itself to the injustice that happened to him while at the same time, you know, I think art is archival. It becomes at some point part of history. So I felt it was important to do it right, along with all the other artwork you may see. But for me, um, to do it right, to do it respectful, but to give the impact and, and, and the seriousness of what took place, that was more important than just creating of, you know, the artwork for this event and then create the artwork for the next event. Uh, if I don't do them right then, it doesn't mean they're not going to get done. But I want them to fit into the context of how I work as a creative person, as an artist. And I want them to be correct. I want them to, to be respectful, but I want them to have the impact uh, that they should have. So. Uh, for me, there's a certain level of artistic responsibility, but at the same time, I think as artists, we're archivers. We, we record history if we're doing that kind of work. Um, art is personal and a lot of art uh, that you see is internal from the artist. It's their view of the world. It's their view of their personal life. It's their view of their environment so that they're trying to catch. So that is the important thing. And for me, working essentially with current events, current situations, most of my work reflects what's going on in the world around us. It reflects on what's taking place. It's just me as an artist uh, creating my own version or my statement to that particular work. Artists record the world as we see it, but we also record the world around us. And this is nothing new. Uh, Goya, uh, his paintings depicted the revolution of that time and people waited for him to put the paintings up in the storefront of what was going on. Because think about it, media has not always been there. It has been there for many years, but for artists, that particular image is going to stand the test of time. Uh, for us today in the world, video, photos, they become part of this large, humongous archival system for us to go back and find, but we're bombarded with a new image every day. We're bombarded with a new image every minute. So, uh, but our work is, is there, it's there. Uh, the 3rd of May, that famous painting, it's there. The, the horror of it is there. Uh, Guanica is there, Picasso's Guanica. You know, um, Jacob Lawrence's Migration is there, it's archival, it's history, it's giving you the artistic view of images of that time. So um, historians, curators are very knowledgeable, of, you know, when they're researching artists, it's part of their knowledge of what they're, um, of what they're looking for and, and what they're looking at. These images are timeless.